Jesus stripped of majesty He hangs disfigured on a tree A man of grief by man betrayed Like one from whom we turn away Led like a lamb without a sign In mockery with violence climbed A sacrificial offering Atoning for his people's sin Oh, what amazing love I bow before the cross My pride reduced to dust What amazing love It overwhelms my soul My broken life made whole See Jesus cold within the grave Cut off from life our lives to save Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. I am guessing we are live and there is no technical issues. If that is the case, you are seeing me, but you can't hear me. Please do express that in the chat. Uh, 
And um, we've got Brother Usama Daktok with us. We've been going through story of Joseph from the Quran. So Surah 12, which starts that um, these are the clear verses and same chapter finishes with well-detailed book. What we will see is what, or what we have been seeing is actually that is not the case because we only did 13 <laughs> verse and Brother Usama brought up hundreds of questions and we are still waiting basic answer to those basic questions. Um, so thank you very much everyone who is joining us. If you want to get our attention for the topic which we are discussing, please, please put at sign in front of DCCI Ministries, as well as I just want to gently encourage you to have your conversations around the topic which we are discussing. Please do not abuse and harass my chat by copying the same message. Um, it's just not acceptable at all. Probably you will be timed out if you do that. <clears throat> uh, peace of Christ be with you, brother. How are you doing? And hello, my dear sister. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all your wonderful audience. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. How is life been with you, brother? Life is good. Uh, travel all over the United States. I'm right now in the state of Minnesota, and uh, people can be praying for me as I'll be speaking in different events. Between here and Wisconsin, I have some speaking engagement here, some in Wisconsin. So the next uh, three weeks or so, I'll be traveling between these two states. So but everything is good, praise God. So you are like, how far are you from home? Uh, between eight to 11 hours, depending where I am exactly, maybe 12 sometimes, yeah. Okay, that's long way from that's home. Not right? way, no. That's long way from To me, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if, if I'm in Florida, I'm speaking in California or Washington state, that is literally a good uh, 30 some hours, 40 hours, so that's a lot more. I'm in the middle right now. Okay, um, so you've been um, joining us last couple of weeks and <clears> helping <throat> us to think through how well detailed, well explained and very clear book Quran is and you are focusing on Surah chapter 12. Um, would you be kind enough and then ju just summarize for us what we've done so far? Um, sure. Also, uh, we pick it up from there and then continue. All right. Well, uh, we know obviously verse one started with Aleph, Lam, Ra, and the Lam is attached to Ra in the Arabic uh, Quran of Hafs, the one we use in Egypt. So it's a word, not just three letters, and uh, no one knows what it means. But the beauty is next to it, Allah is telling us that these are the beautiful verses, the clear verses uh, of the book, the Quran. And then verse two, Allah assured us it is an Arabic Quran. Perhaps we can understand. I'm sorry to tell Allah it is not Arabic and I cannot understand foreign language. But that's the general answer for most people. But in my case, I worked hard to figure out all the other 279 non-Arabic words in the Quran, which some of them are repeated over 100 times. But so now we know for verse 3 that this is the best of the stories. So I picked up that chapter. But first of all, it is my favorite story in the Bible. If you want to know about the amazing love of God in the Old Testament, that's one of the chapters, or that's one of the stories, that's one of the account of the Old Testament where we learn about the amazing love of God, not to just to Joseph uh, and Jacob, but for the rest of the family. And then to the whole entire uh, Jewish nation, God's chosen people. And then through them, the amazing love of God to me and you, or those who live in the 21st century. So obviously, that story about the amazing love of God is missing in the Quran. Even though all Muslims believe that they have the true account of Joseph. No, it is a foolish counterfeit to Joseph, as we're going to see in the rest of our study. It's not the best of the Quran. Even though it is the best of the Quran. Why? Most stories in the Quran to understand, as when we do this in the future, we look at many other characters of prophets, as Muslims claim in the Quran. You have to read the entire book of the Quran to figure out who is Moses or who is uh, uh, David or who is Abraham or who is wh whatever name you pick up from the Old Testament, Noah, or even the made up stories of Muhammad, like Saleh and, and uh, the main of these, what I call Arab prophets in the Quran. But when you come to the story of Joseph, it's all written in one chapter, beautifully and beautifully. What you mean? It is all there. And when you read it, you ask questions, as you mentioned, Sister Hatun, and you have no answer. And he said, before Allah revealed that verse 
these verses to Muhammad, Quran chapter 12, he was among the unknown, the unknown, uh, the uh, the one who do not know. Well, guess what? Even after we today look at all these 111 verses of Quran chapter 12, we still do not know. We're still unaware of who Joseph is or what happened in the life of Joseph. Obviously, in the Quran, he mentioned Joseph have one dream about the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bound down to uh, Joseph. And uh, what is so amazing, Muhammad assured us that he never told the dream to his brothers because his father told him, do not tell the dream to your fathers. In the Bible, we know he had two dreams and he shared these two dreams with his father. And that's exactly what we read in verses 4 and 5 when Allah said, uh, in the Quran that uh, Satan is a great enemy and he tried to put enmity between you and your brother if you told them the story. And then amazingly in verse uh, 6 uh, about uh, Jacob is telling us that somehow Joseph will grow up to be a one who interprets the dreams. Now when, when you read this portion of the Quran from verses uh, 3, 4, and 5 and 6, you may think Joseph ah, grown up young man in his 12, 13, maybe 14 years old because the talk between Jacob and Joseph is a little bit of level of maturity. Okay, but that's not what we see as we continue in the stories, uh, the writing of Muhammad in the Quran. Uh, then in verse 7, we know that uh, somehow we read that verse that Joseph and his brother were, there was some sign, there was some miracle for those who are questioning. And what is the question that Joseph is loved by his father, Joseph and his brother are loved by their father more than the rest of the family. We ask the question why, or can you give me a reason? Obviously, from the Quran, you have no answer. We went back to Genesis account. That's what we did the last time. And we found out there are plenty of reasons why Jacob loved Joseph and his brother. By the way, his name is Benjamin. Muhammad never gave us any details on the Quran. So you don't know the names of uh, Joseph's brother or the rest of the brothers, which we found, obviously, in the biblical account, in the Genesis account. Uh, why he loves them more? Because very simple, they are the beloved children of his beloved wife. Uh, who is missing because she died uh, at the time of the birth of Benjamin. And they are the children of the beloved wife whom he loved more than other uh, wife, Leah, and the other two concubines, Zelpha and Bilha. And uh, every time we look, he the children of the old age. We know that from our Middle East culture, when you are in your 50s and your wife gets you a little baby boy or baby girl, of course, you're going to spoil them rotten and you're going to love them more than the rest of the children in the family. But then we see something strange in verse 8 that they said, if we will get rid of that boy and, uh, and, and, and then our father will love us, we'll become a good people and our father will love us. What a weird concept. Killing the one whom your father loved will make you love loved more by your father and uh, so but in verse 9 they, we see that uh, said kill him or cast him in the earth uh, he meant in a well he meant in a dry well obviously when you read the story of the quran you know that somebody told the story to muhammad so he knows what's coming and he was writing about the information he maybe heard a few years before he wrote the poetry of the quran or whoever helped him to write the story but in the bible things go naturally as we're going to see again in Genesis account, chapter 37 today. It was not they planned to kill him or throw him in the well. They want to kill him. And then something happened. And the brother by the name Robin tried to save him, to take him back to his father. said, no, 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 we don't kill him, as we're going to see. But let us throw him in the well. It was not the plan to do so. So obviously, we move on to verse uh, uh, 10, the one who said that which is, he said, what's supposed to be said <laughs> in verse 9. But somehow, uh, one of them said, we do not know who is that one. I said a minute ago, Robin. And uh, and then he's telling him, not just he was throwing him down and he was to save his life. No, somebody going to pick him up. Some of the travelers, some of the caravan, they're going to pick him up and uh, they will take him. It's like, wow. You see, Muhammad knows what's coming because he heard the story and he put it in the poetry form. No, that's not the case of the Bible. He did not say, let's uh, throw him in that well, and somebody can become no stress and throw him that well because I am planning to take him out of the well, take him back to his daddy. And we will see that in the Bible, what happened when he came back and the, the young man, Joseph, was not there. So obviously, uh, now we go to verse 11. They, uh, they know that their father does not trust him. And here we find that this, the age of Joseph dropped from, I'm guessing, 12, 13 to maybe uh, 4, 3, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Why? Because, Father, why don't you trust us with Joseph? We're, we're good advisor for him. 
He's our brother. We love him. Send him back. Send him with us tomorrow that he will play and have fun. He can play with the sheep, run on the grass, roll on the grass, or maybe play some soccer together or, or some volleyball. We're going to have good time with, 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 with your son, Joseph. And then in verse 13, that's where we stop. He said, what? I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm going to give you my son. And you're going to get distracted. And somehow um, the wolf will eat him. Well, the wolf will not eat a 10 years old boy. He may bite him. He take a bite of meat out of his butt or his arm. But he will not eat him. Devour him. He will literally finish him. He ate the head and the legs and everything between. That's exactly what Jacob is talking about. So what is the age? I'm guessing three or four years old. Now let's listen to the answer as Sister Hatun will share with us what is written in verse 14 and we'll move on with our study. Go ahead, Sister. So I'll pick up, I think I'll pick up from verse 12. Is that okay? That's fine, Sister. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Surah 12, verse um, 12. Actually, I'm going to read my translation, brother, if that's okay. That's fine with me. That's okay. Send him with us tomorrow that he may eat well and play. And indeed, we will be his guardians. Said, indeed, it saddens me that you should take him. And I fear that wolf would eat him while you are with him. Um, you are of him unwell. They said, if a wolf should eat him while we are a strong clan, indeed, we would then be losers. Oh, there will be a losers if the wolf uh, shown him and ate him, devour him. That this is this is like a, a, a grown up men who have been uh, shepherding for years. They know about everything, and they just want to take that boy from their daddy uh, to accomplish in him what they are wishing, to, which is to get rid of him, to kill him. So Jacob loves him. <laughs> Amazing, the word of Allah. Now, where is they were where is they were shepherding? We do not know. Uh, well, did really Joseph, did really Jacob tell him, okay, go ahead, take them uh, uh, as we can assume between verses 14 and 15? Of course, because they didn't steal him. They took it by their, by their hand. Little boy. And notice, according to the teaching of the Quran, once again, they never heard his dreams. They hate him for no reason. I challenge any Muslim to contact Sister Hatun or, or just come on the show and tell us what was the sin of Joseph, why they hated him. Give me one reason. I'm assuming three, maybe four years old, little boy, little boy. They hate him so much that they are willing to kill him. And nobody can give me one reason. Because Muhammad got the whole story wrong. Let me prove it to you. Let's continue. In verse 15. So when they took him out and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired him, you will surely inform them about this affair of theirs while they do not perceive. So they agreed to put him in the bottom of the ship, the bottom of the well. But Allah somehow explained to Joseph, oh, I'm going to, here's, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you exactly what's, here is the future of your life. And Allah did it to Joseph, and somehow they never realized it. Wow, that must be a miraculous, powerful work of Allah that he can explain to Joseph, but not to them. You see how beautiful the Quran? You see the details? Now, who is the one who come up with the idea? Let, we, don't, we should not kill him. Let's throw him in the well. Notice that the verse 15 is coming in the almost right order, but we do not have any details, okay? How many of them said we kill him? How many said, no, we should not kill him? When when did he uh, make the deal to throw him in the bottom of the well? Nobody knows. Allah does not know. Muhammad does not know. Of course, Jibreel did not know to tell Muhammad. So I want us to go to the Bible, Genesis chapter 37, and I need to read the true biblical account. The blessed word of God, which Muhammad heard of it, and he write from it to make us this the best of the stories of the Quran. First of all, we know in Genesis chapter 37 that Joseph was 17 years old. Genesis chapter 37, and let's read verses 1 and 2, Sister Hatun. 
Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed and in the, in the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers. The sons of Bila and sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Can you imagine 17 years old? Can you tell me now? If you're using logical common sense, you got a 17 years old young man, he can be married. He literally can be married. Jacob loved him so much, he, he spoiled him. I understand that, and I and I, I shared that with you last time. It's it's not like a, something we're guessing, we know. But at the same time, he did not spoil them that badly that he will not go and work with his father. No, he used to go all the time to work with his brothers and uh, those obviously the, the, the children of Zilpha and Bilha and Leah. And we know that one of the reasons I did not mention earlier why he was not loved by his brother because he was a teller. What is a teller? He sees some things they do bad. He goes, by the way, dad, today they attack somebody. By the way, dad, today they start a fire with some a fight with somebody. By the way, dad, today they stole. So he was telling about all the bad things he used to do. I'm not talking about he went one trip. He was back and forth with his brothers. So if you go back to the Quran about, oh, father, why don't you trust us? Let us have little, little baby Joseph. He will come and play with us and we can have a great time. That is made up story. That's a foolish made up story. If you are, if you are a liar and you don't want to make a better story than that, then you're a fool. Now, we're going to move on. Of course, we know that he made him the shirt in verse uh, 3, the colorful shirt. Which Muhammad mentioned the Quran, but he never mentioned about giving it to him. And I think Paul, uh, the uh, uh, Joseph here, he wears that shirt all the time. It's his, his favorite shirt. Have you ever seen a teenager wearing a shirt, same shirt all the time? I mean, I'm not kidding. I was in a camp last week, and some of these kids wear the same clothes the whole entire week. They got dirty by because they're fancy. Okay, a color shirt from your daddy. Who did not give any of your brothers like it? He wore it all the time, and he go. I, I can imagine. So, oh, I, I like my shirt. Hey, ba ba Benjamin, you see that? It's my shirt. Oh, hey, Ruben, Ruben, Judah, Judah, you see that? Oh, oh I, I, I remember now. You saw me wear it last week. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why they even got jealous and hate him because they know that he was loved by their father more than the rest of them. So they hated him. Especially when we know in the brief, uh, the following verses that he said the two dreams for them, and uh, they actually felt the not just felt it the jealousy of him. Uh, Jacob did not just felt he actually stopped him. What are you saying? Uh, it, listen, go read verse eleven, sister. Read verse eleven. His brothers were jealous of him. And let's uh, be, be better. Let's ten and eleven. Ten and eleven together. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept Meta in mind. So the jealousy was there from all the things happened in the previous 17 years of Joseph, not just this little boy, 17 years of a long things happened. Now, they went to take care of the sheep, uh, to shepherd the sheep, and he was not with them on that trip. How do we know that? Because in verse 13, uh, Jacob is asking Joseph to go and check on his brothers. Oh, my world. Tell this to Jibreel, who got the story wrong from Allah, and give it to Muhammad by mistake. It was not the brothers ask Jacob, give us our brother to play with us. No, 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 no. It is Jacob himself who sent his 17 years old young man to check on them. And notice the details of the Bible. It's not one of them tells the others. We know exactly where he was, where he went, and then where else he went. Man. So uh, let's go to verse 13, 14. I read it from 12, maybe that's the beginning of the verse. 13 and 14. The Bible, John says 37, verses and, 13 and 14. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, 
Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he, he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When so Joseph what? arrived at Shechem, sure. a man was found on the ground wandering in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. So he was with his daddy where? In um, Shechem. No, he was with daddy in Habrun and he sent him to Shechem. Do you know that I can open the map of Israel right now and I show you where is Habrun? This is the land of Canaan. Where is Habrun and where is Shechem? It's a little bit north of Hatun. Okay, for Habrun. That's where he went. And then he went there and he could not find them. So as a good boy, a good young man, 17 years old, he said, well, I went, I couldn't find them. I just go back. No, he asked. He was like lost, looking everywhere, right and left. He could not find his brothers. Then he met with this man. He said, who are you asking for? What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers. Oh, I heard them said, we're going to the land of Dosen. That's another city. So we have Habrun, we have Shekim, we have Dosen. Geography in the Bible? Yes. Even though the Bible is not a book of geography, but when it tells us a true biblical account, we see the geography in it. I dare a Muslim to show me one story in the Quran where Muhammad mentioned the name of two cities. He was here and he went there. It does not exist in the Quran. In the total of the verse of the Quran, Allah never gave us detail about anything. Why? Because Allah and Jibreel are bad students. They could not remember what happened in the Bible. Therefore, Muhammad, poor Muhammad, if you don't have the information, you cannot give it away. There's no way a Muslim can quote me two city. Even Mecca in the Quran, it became Becca. Wrong city. I have no idea what Becca is. So, he went and checked on his brothers in the land of Dusan. Well, guess what? When he went there, he found them in Dusan. Let me show you, and I give you enough evidence uh, about how the biblical, true biblical account is, took, is taking place. Verse 18, sister. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Oh! Here he is, Joseph. I was like, oh my God, Joseph is by himself outside the house. He came to us by himself. No, it is a norm. He was working with them. He went for the season in Shakim. He couldn't find him. He went on and, he, and this on. Let's kill him. Why do you want to kill him? In the Quran, we have no reason. I challenge you, find me one thing Joseph did wrong in the Quran. His brother, that little boy, the three, four years old, that they want to kill him. I mean, if I look at the story of the Quran, I may assume that the brothers of Joseph are the most savage Muslim believers. They're more savage than Muhammad and the early companion of Muhammad. Why? Because they want to kill their little brother. Muhammad, at least, was killing the Jews and the Christian who refused to submit to him. So Muhammad is a savage. We know that. Okay. But in the story of Joseph and the Quran, I know for sure that the brothers of Joseph make Muhammad and the early Muslim companion angels. Why? Because these animals want to kill their own brother, the four years old or three years old, for no reason. But that's okay. That's okay. Now, how do we know that there is another reason to hate them, which Muhammad forgot to mention in the Quran, is verse 19. What did they say to one another? Go ahead, sister. Here comes that dream, they say to each other. Oh. oh. So they heard the dreams. Sahib al-Ahlam, the companion or the owner of the dreams, plural. So they not only heard one dream, but two or more. And guess what? They know the dreams. According to the Quran, oh, don't tell your brothers. They're going to hate you. Okay, daddy. Uh, the little boy. Okay, papa. I'm going to tell them. Okay. There's a contradiction. It's almost every sentence as we go. So what happened in verses 21? Okay, let's read actually 20. Well, what, what, then it, let's, uh, let's see how the plan was and then how the plan was changed. Okay, go ahead, sister. Verse 20. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into the one of those kisterns and say to the for a kisters animal, devour him. Then we will see what comes of his dreams. Let's kill him, throw them in one of this well. <laughs> Why? Because they don't want his body to they brought, they, When you bury a guy, throw him away. He's dead down the belt. He's not going to come up. Okay? That's uh, them. And then we'll say what? A vicious animal, a vicious beast, 
an evil beast. This is say wolf here, sister uh, Hatun. Do you see the word wolf somewhere in that verse? A wolf? Of course, no wolf. You can say a bear. You can say a lion. You can say what well, some vicious animal, not a wolf. A wolf will not chew a 17 years old boy. As a matter of fact, he can, with a piece of a rod in his hand as a shepherd, he will hit the wolf on his head and kill him on the spot, like that. That wolf will not last a few minutes with Joseph, 17 years old. No, 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 no. A vicious animal. See, I think the Bible story makes more sense than the comedy of Muhammad in the Quran. 17 years old cannot be eaten by a wolf. So, let's kill him. Now, Robin, Robin, uh, heard the, the whole setting they're talking so Reuben is going to get involved to change the plan let's read 21 and 22 if you don't mind when Reuben heard this he tried to rescue him from their hands let's not take his life he said don't shed any blood throw him into these Christians here in the desert but don't lay the hand don't lay Sorry, brother. Don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said to this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. Is that what we read in the Quran? I mean, the Bible account is very clear. We don't kill him. He's our brother. Let's just throw him in this well. Why he did that? Because in his mind, this is a plan of Reuben. After you know, everybody's going to work, he grab him out and take him back to his daddy and tell him, your sons, are really gonna about to kill this young man here and don't uh, protect him from now on. That is the plan of Reuben. That's not what the Quran said. Let's read again verse 15 uh, in the Quran just to show you the comparison between the biblical account, the true biblical account, and the hogwash propaganda of Muhammad in the Quran. Verse 15 of Quran chapter 2. Yeah. When they took him out and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired him. You will surely inform them about this affair of theirs while they do not perceive. What is Reuben? We do not know. Why he was thrown in that well? They agree on it. We do not know. As a matter of fact, if we go early in the plan of how is he going to do that, verse 10. Verse 10 should be in, in the place of verse 15. But somehow, Muhammad is putting that bits and pieces like uh, poor students. He does not know how to put the story accurate. That's exactly what we have in verse 10, sister. Said the speaker among them, do not kill Joseph, but throw him into the bottom of the well. Some travelers will pick him up if you would do so. So one of them we do not know, it's Reuben. Throw them in the well. Why? Because somebody is going to pick him up. Really? So he knows what's coming. What if nobody come pick him up from the well and he stays there for a couple of weeks? What's going to happen? He die of thirst. But that's not the imagination of Muhammad. So this is what we have seen so far. Let's continue back in the Bible, Genesis chapter 37. And what happened to, to, to uh, the next step? Uh, verse 23, 24, 25. What an amazing story. I remember when I read the story when I was eight, nine years old. And my daddy will come in a point and he will stop. I said, Dad, Dad, read some more. I, I, I want to know what happened. Read some more. And my daddy was so wise as an eight, nine years old. He will not read the entire story. He come in a good spot where he caught your attention. And he knows. My daddy was, knows. I want to know what happened next. I said, and the rest of the story tomorrow. Before we go to bed tomorrow. It's like, come on, Dad. Read me a little bit more. I was exciting. Very excited to read the rest of the story, to know that what's happened to Joseph. When I read the Quran, it's like, whatever. Muhammad ruined the best of the stories of the Bible in the Quran. He ruined it. And I feel sorry for Muslims because they think they got the best of the stories, which he ruined my favorite story, my personal favorite story. Anyway, let's go on. Let's go to uh, verses. Uh, sorry, just, just a second, brother. Just a second. Sorry. Just sure. a second. That's absolutely. Take your time. Verse 23 is this where we need to go. 23 of Genesis um, 37. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the uh, certain. 
so the certains were empty there was no water in it as they sat down to eat their meal they looked up and saw a car caravan of ishmaelites are coming coming from G gilead their camels were loaded with spices balms and mirrors mirrors and they were on their way to take them down to egypt all right we, we will read this as we continue now the shirt which muhammad talked about in the end of the story and it was in the end of the story with Joseph. I mean, there is no way Joseph can have access to the shirt after the story here. Why? They took the shirt out of him, the colorful shirt, the one he used to brag about, wearing all day long to make his brother more jealous of him. They took the shirt out and then they throw Joseph in the well. Why do you need the shirt for? Because they're going to use it to as an evidence for his death. Some a wild uh, animals, a wolf, or not, not a wolf, obviously, <laughs> a, a lion or a lioness ate him, so they need that shirt. And they sat and eat. What a cruel child, uh, young man, uh, men. They sit and eat one of the brother in the well. And I can only imagine, I'm going to talk about that later when he confronted them in Egypt. I can only imagine his crying from the well. Please, my brother, get me out of here. Don't be silly. Don't do that to me. Please. Okay. So as they sit and eat, they say a caravan. What's the caravan? Ishmaelites. You know why Muhammad never mentioned that verse in the story of the Quran? Because that would ruin his claim that he's a descendant of Ishmael. Notice they're called Ishmaelites, not Arabites. No, no, no Arab in it. Ishmaelites. Who are the Ishmaelites? They're descendants of Abraham and Hagar. Where Hagar from? Hagar is from Egypt. So logically, Hagar have brothers and family in Egypt. So uh, Hagar uh, got lost in uh, Shabbat. We know the story of the Bible. And where she went? She went back to Egypt. The children grew up, and Ishmael uh, 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 have a wife from Egypt. So we have children, half Egyptian, and half Jew, or half uh, uh, from the Abrahamic descendant, because Ishmael is his son. So you see the connection here between the Ishmaelites and the travelers who are going back and forth to Egypt, where are you going? I'm going to grandma. Where are you going? I'm going to some of my uncles. And where do you live? And what they were doing, they were travelers. That's what they do. Caravan travelers. Okay. So where they were going, the Ishmaelites, they were going to Egypt. Carrying what? Carrying goods. They're, they're salesmen. That's exactly what they used to do. So they go from Havala, which is in front of Egypt, to Assyria. Where did they learn that? Genesis. Chapter 25. That's the that is their place of traveling, not the Saudi Arabia Peninsula, the land of the east. I mean, literally, reading that one verse is a great evidence that Muhammad got everything about Ishmael wrong. Genesis chapter 25. Go with me, sister Hatun. I apologize for jumping from one chapter to another because I think it's very important to learn about that. Genesis 25. Which verse, brother? Verse 6. Where is the children of Keturah live? Keturah is the wife of Muhammad. Uh, so, sorry, the wife of uh, of Abraham after Sarah died. Muhammad knew nothing about Keturah. He never mentioned her anywhere. And she has children and grandchildren. We'll read their names between verses 2 to 6. But let's read verse 6. Where did the children of Keturah, the Arabs, live? But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons and his concubines and send them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. The land of the east is the Saudi Arabia Peninsula. And I can tie the names of the children of Keturah to Arab countries. We're not going to do this today. We'll do it some other time. Now, how about Ishmael? Ishmael will read about him and his son, verse 12, and then we'll read all the names of his sons up to verse 17. Notice, by the way, that when, when, when Isaac died, Ishmael uh, when when Abraham died, Ishmael and Isaac both buried their father. So they were still near back. They, it's not like Ishmael disappeared from the story. No, he was sent away with his mama. He got married, had children. And at the time of the death of Abraham, uh, Ishmael and Isaac, both of them buried Abraham, their father. But where did the children of Ishmael live? Verse 18. His descendants settled into the area of Havilah to shore near the border of Egypt, as you go towards Ashur, 
and they lived in hostile towards all their brothers. That's exactly where the Ishmaelites live. They live in the midst of the brothers. Which brothers? Isaac. Have a son by the name Jacob. Jacob have twelve sons. So there is here is a big family, the big story between the Ishmaelites and the descendant of Israel, the twelve sons. So they're a caravan. They're gonna go to see grandma, or they're gonna do some business in Egypt because that's where they live. They don't go from Saudi Arabia, Mecca to Egypt. That's not their trafficking. There was no road there. They're going from Havala, which is in front of Egypt, to Assyria, back and forth, back and forth, doing their caravan business. Now. So these guys are going to be traveling, and these guys are going to buy Joseph. How do we learn that? Here is the biblical account. Genesis chapter, chapter 37. If you don't mind, one more time, sister, go to Genesis chapter 37. And verse 28. Or 27 and 28. Let's read both verses. It doesn't matter. More reading, the more accurate information we get. Go ahead. Genesis 37 from 27. Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianites merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and um, sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. That's how Joseph was sold. He was pulled out of the ship. And I and I always, uh, as a child, and I heard the story, my heart was attached to the story that I would be sitting in bed at night and I'm thinking about Joseph, what he went through. Perhaps Joseph, he saw his brother pulling out from the, from the well. So thank you. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Jehovah. I saw they're going to leave me down there. And he's coming out the thing. It was dark down there. And he's like, open his eyes. Cannot open his eyes. And they pull him out. And he feel good about it. But then he realized that they're counting money. 20 pieces of silver. And then he said, what are you doing? Talking to his own brother. What are you doing to me? You can't do that to me. You can't sell me. You, you, you saw me as a slave? I'm your brother. Why are you doing this to me? And tie his hand behind the camel down to Egypt. All this happened. And guess what? Reuben, the one who uh, invented the great idea to save his brother Joseph from his from the rest of the brothers, was not there. How do we know Reuben was not there? Let's go to verse 29. When Reuben returned to the Sirton, I need to practice how to pronounce that word. And so that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and then said, the boy isn't here. Where can I turn now? That is a true biblical account. That's not in the Quran. In the Quran, they all agree. Put him in the well, saw him at the end of the story. Now, so now he tore his clothes. That's a, a sign in the Old Testament to uh, great sorrow when a king tore his uh, clothes or somebody tore his clothes or put the dust over their head it's a very a low low point of the life of the person very great sorrow there's no hope it is a hopeless situation so what are you going to do with joseph's story as uh, verses 31 32 but before we read it here let's go back to the quran i want to see what allah first said in the quran and then we're going to see what the bible actually told us in, in the true account verse 18 verse 18 of quran chapter 12 and they brought brought upon his shirt false blood. Shall I read from verse 16? We already read, sister. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, you're right. Start from 16. Okay. And they come to their father at night weeping. They said, Oh, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Joseph with our possession. And a wolf ate him. But you would not believe us, even if we were truthful. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Jacob said, rather your souls have enticed you to do something, so patience is most fitting. And Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe. I'm telling you, Muhammad ruined the story. He destroyed it. 
So it was in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> See, Muhammad knows the details. Sister Hatun. It was not in the afternoon or late at, at night. No, it's in the evening. That, that's Al Asha. Asha. When the Aidan of Asha is dark outside, that's when they came to their daddy. Wow. That's a piece of information I could not find in the Bible. Asha, you know. Oh, our father, we were we were busy doing stuff, and the wolf ate your son. Are you kidding me? The wolf ate a 17 years old. No, I'm sorry. The Quran is a three, three, four years old boy, little boy, you know. How did they know the wolf? Sister Hatun. I mean, he said, I'm afraid the wolf will eat him. That's Jacob before they take the little boy to go play with him. Now they come back to their daddy at night as all oh, the wolf ate him. How did they know the wolf? Did they saw the wolf? I mean, what an amazing story. Yeah, sure, Jacob is a prophet. He knows exactly that he will be eaten by the wolf. How did the sons know it was also wolf? Could be a could be a lion? Could be some other creature? They only have wolves there. So, and I we know, Lord, our daddy, we know that you're not believing us, even, even though we're truthful. And don't worry, don't worry, they were crying, sister. They were weeping. Oh, daddy, I'm sorry. Huh. What was the reaction of Jacob? Oh, look at this. They bought a false blood and shirt. Ah, take it easy, guys. Be patient. Patient is beautiful. Hey, honey, fix us some dinner here. We the guys came. In. You guys have coffee. What do you want? Some ice cream? That's how ridiculous Allah is in the Quran. Is this a reaction of a father who does not want to give his son? To his children because he's afraid that the wolf will eat him, and then they're coming back crying. And he, uh, the wolf, ah, oh, easy, take it, just relax. Come on, guys, wash your feet, wash your hand, eat a bite. We got some coffee here going on in a minute. Here, what a stupid answer written by a stupid prophet and a stupid angel and a stupid Allah. There are a bunch of stupids. Would this make sense to you, my dear Muslim friend? You imagine this is your son, and he, the, the, your, the rest of your sons came, so with the wolf ate him. Okay, have a good. Where's the bones? There's anything left of him so we can bury him? Should we have a funeral service? Why even the shirt? See, the shirt is mentioned in copy that which is written in the Bible, but we're missing the point. And I love it how you read Muslim scars interpretation. Ibn Kassir and others. Oh, by the way, Hatun, they cut the, the shirt pieces so it make it look like it was really left over the wolf when he ate him. Cut the shirt pieces. They don't have any of the body, but they got the shirt, and the shirt was cut and was covered with blood. Now Jacob is convinced, and guess what? He's having good time. Let's eat and let's be merry. Forget about it. Be patient. Patient is beautiful. What a sick way of telling me the best of the stories in Muhammad in the Quran. Let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible so we know. We'll go back to Genesis chapter 37. 31. Verse 31 of chapter 37 and 32. 33. 30. Let's read the, the rest of the chapter. Actually. Start from 31 to 36. Okay. Then they got Joseph's robe slaughtered a goat and dipped in the, dipped the rope in the blood. They took the ornament rope back to their father and then said, we found this, examine it to see whether it is your son's rope. He recognized it and then said, it is my son's rope. Some voracious animal has devoted him. Joseph has surely been torn into pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All his brothers and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in the mo in morning will go will I go will I go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midites sold Joseph in Egypt to one of the Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the ground. That's how the Bible ends in chapter 37. But what do we read in the previous five verses? They took the shirt and they tell us what blood, not just some false blood, the blood of a goat. They cover the blood of the goat. Took the shirt to their father. Oh, father, check out. Is this your son's shirt? 
<laughs> if they took it with them and they know it was his shirt, why do you even want to do that? Biblical account, they got the shirt in blood, take the shirt to the father as if they were traveling the field and they saw that shirt. Wait a minute. Is this Joseph's shirt? What? Send it to his dad. That, is that your son's shirt? And he took the shirt, examined it. Oh, yeah. That's my son's shirt. A vicious animal devoured him. He was, Joseph is, was gone. And what after this? Okay, guys, uh, my son is dead. Oh, well, life. Let's have coffee. Let's eat them. No, he tore his clothes. Remember Reuben a minute ago? He tore his clothes when he could not find his brother in the well. Why? Because he was planning to take it back to his daddy. Now, daddy found out that is the shirt of his son. And he know for sure that the son is gone. He's aging. Vicious animal. They got his bones up some places and shown him. So he tore his clothes. Normal reaction, you idiots. I'm talking to the Muslim who believe in the Quran. Normal reaction. You lose your son, 17 years old, whom you love more than the rest of your sons, the son of your beloved wife, the son of your missing wife, the son who is obedient to you, the best son you got. And you just, hey, let's have a good time. Drink coffee? Are you out of your mind? What a foolish of a Muslim to continue to defend the Quran, to continue to defend Islam as if it is the true religion of Allah because they just have this stupid black glasses in their eyes. Take the glass of Islam off. Read your Quran and understand the best of the story. The best of the story is a comedy. It's a foolishness. Just be patient. Let's have coffee and let it uh, wait on Allah. No, he cut his clothes. He put dust over his head. He, he wore and cry and weep and weep. Oh, for a couple of days. No, I am. Days and days. Okay, everybody, if the sons come, I'm sorry, Dad. Sorry for the loss of your son. And, and, and their wives, I, I, I'm sorry, my father-in-law. He was a good boy, and I'm sorry. And it's okay, now I, I, I'm okay. No, he will not be comforted. I will die. I will go to my tomb sorrowful over the loss of my son. That is a normal reaction, you idiots. Defender of the Quran and the believers of Islam. That is a normal reaction. You could not find any other way less than that. He will go, he will die, sorrowful over the loss of his son. By the way, as we continue in the story of the Quran in the near future, you find he will do that in the wrong time when he knows that his son is still alive. What a dumb Allah and Jibreel and Muhammad. He will weave and he will lose his sight, crying over Joseph. In the same time, he knows he's alive. I mean, crying for no reason. Like, like Jacob is nuts. He's literally a nut guy. When he knows his son is alive and he cries and loses his eyesight over it. No, the biblical account, he wept and he wept. He will not be comforted by anybody. I don't want to hear it anymore. I, 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 I don't, I'm not going to live my rest of my life, be comforted. I am going to be sorrowful until I'm dying. When I die, I'm going to die in sorrow until I see my son face to face in the eternity. That is a normal reaction. Let's go back to the comedy Quran. Quran chapter 12. Verse 19. 20. And that come a company. Sorry. Go ahead, sister. And that come a company of the travelers. Then they sent their water draw and he let down his bucket. He said, good news, he is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him taking him as merchants. And Allah was knowing of what they did. And they sold him for reduced price, a few dirhams. They were concern, concerning him of those content with little. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus, to, to get through that chapter here. The 11, 111 chapter, verses of the chapter. Because every verse seen to me is dumb for numbers. Every verse in the Quran. In the best of the Quran. So what they did? Uh, the uh, travelers, this uh, caravan people, we do not know who they are. Where they coming from, we do not know. Where is he going, we do not know. Oh, the Midianites, okay. And the, the guy, he put the bucket down in the well to get some water. And he put it out. Man, oh, that little boy is hanging inside the bucket. Oh, good news. Praise Allah or praise whatever they worship me. He's a good boy here.
Who pulled Joseph from the well? His brothers. Who is he sold it to? The Midianites. These are traveling. Who are Ishmaelites? Who are traveling to Egypt? What are they doing? They're salesmen. They're selling and buying goods. Hello? Biblical account. Who pulled out? I, well, some people. Some travelers. Hey, good news. It's a boy. How the world that boy got in the... I don't know. Maybe he was playing soccer. And he went behind the soccer. And he fell in the well. Really? And they sold him. Eh, few dirhams. We don't know how many. They were Zahedin, like, uh, I don't know, three dirham, four dirham. Who got the money? Who gives the money to who and how much? You see, the biblical account is destroyed in the best of the verses of the Quran. The Bible said 20 pieces of silver. And by the way, if you go to the time of the sales of Joseph, slaves were sold for 20 pieces of silver. During the time of Jesus, 50 pieces of silver because life gets expensive, you know. But wait a minute, Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, why? Because there's a prophecy that he must be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Even though in Jesus' days, slaves were sold for 50 pieces of silver. But when Joseph was sold, that was the price of a slave. Not a little boy. <laughs> Good news, he's a boy. <laughs> he came out of the bucket. No. 17 years old, young man. And that that that's the Poma and they sold him. His own brother sold him. No, we don't even know what happened here. Let's see. The problem with the Quran, the story is not known. It's it's short, short, short summary of the story. You cannot figure out who did what, when and where, how much. So how many people were sleeping in the uh, cave in Quran chapter 18? Allah does not know. <laughs> Even though Allah said he knows. They were guessing five and the dog is number six. Is there six? Or some say there's six and their dogs is number seven. And some said there were seven and their dog is number eight. Is the eight. And they were assuming and guessing the numbers. And no one knows the number except Allah. Who is speaking in, that ver in these verses? Allah Almighty. Why can't Allah tell us how many they were? But we know exactly, Sister Hatun, how long they slept inside the cave. 300 uh, and nine years. Make sure now. Don't forget the nine. You know how comedy the Quran is? It's a, it's a dumb for dumbers. If you believe in the Quran to be the perfect word of Allah, you're a dumber. And I know that's not a word. And I thought about it before. Just add it to your dictionary and it will be fine. Okay? Dumber equal Muslim believer. Next to it, invented by Usama K. Dagdok. It's fine. I need the credit for it. It's my word. So Allah does not know how many people in the well in the in the cave, and somehow He knows how long they slept there, three hundred and nine years. It makes lots of sense, guys. And now you know they sold them for pieces of silver, uh, for some dirhams. We don't know how many. No, it's twenty pieces, not dirham, but silver. Now Joseph is sold. Who bought him? In the Bible, we know Potiphar. One of the one of the soldiers of Pharaoh in the Quran, Al Aziz, Al Aziz himself, but uh, Joseph, Al Aziz. Do you know Hatun that the name Aziz is not, never mentioned in Egypt? Imagine if I imagine if I tell you one of the pharaohs of my country, his name is Joseph Smith, or his name is Michael a a a Anglo. Of course, that's not Egyptian name. We don't have Aziz in Egypt. Tell this to my dear Muslim friends who believe in Aziz and, and Aziz said, let's, let's read verse uh, 21. What happened in Egypt? And the one from Egypt who bought him to bought him said to his wife, make his re residence comfortable. Perhaps he will benefit us or we will adopt him as a son. And thus we established Joseph in the land that we might teach him the interpretations of events and Allah is predominant over his affair. But most of people do not know. The one who bought him, what's his name? Later we found out, Mr. Al-Aziz. Uncle Al-Aziz is the one who bought him. Told his wife, take care of him. Love him. He may be, become a boy to us. Remember now, according to the Quran, it's a good three, four years old. Maybe he grew up to be our son. No, he did not buy a little boy to be adopted. As Egyptians do not do this adoption of Muhammad in the Quran, he bought him as a slave. 
to work in his house as a slave. No more or less, but a slave. We know in the Bible that the Lord bless the, the, the footy far and bless his house and bless his business because of Joseph. And that's how Joseph got to a hard position in the house, but not because he just decided to adopt him and have him a good boy. He's going to grow up, take my name and carry my name. He'll be uh, our child. No, that's not the case. Muhammad was did wrong. And somehow, that's how Allah made Joseph interpret the saying. And a hadith is the saying. What interpretation of the saying have anything to do with being living in the Aziz house uh, where him and his wife adopted him as a boy? See, Muhammad knows the story uh, he's going to write here down in the poetry or whoever helped him. He knows that he knows a little bit later Joseph is going to interpret dreams. So let us back up a little bit. Jacob said in previous verses, oh, uh, Allah, don't tell your dream to your brothers, okay, because they're going to hate you. Uh, and Allah will teach you the interpretation of the dreams. Oh, here's the first one, Prophet Jacob. He's a prophet. He knows that his son is going to interpret the dreams, okay? The sayings. Here we go in verse uh, 21. Oh, uh, the Pharaoh, oh, not the Pharaoh, I'm sorry, Al-Aziz, the, the man who bought uh, 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 Joseph, he knows that, uh, 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 you know, he's going to be a son to us. And then Allah said, oh, we actually do that to help them to be the interpretation, the interpreter of the saying. Somehow Muhammad is like hinting to something is coming up. Joseph is going to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. It's coming up, build up, you know about it. But in the Bible, I don't ever see anything about that. Not by Jacob, not by the man who bought him. There's no no, no idea of it's gonna be a good son for them. He's a, he's not adopted, he slaves, no more or less than slave. And in verse 22, what we read there. And when he Joseph reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and those we rewarded the doors of the good. He became wise man and he became strong and he's a doers of the good and uh, he, he became strong. And now how many years went by in this case here? Like we're talking about, he was three or four and now he's what, 20? Oh, wow, Muslim scholar. When he Balagha Shaddam became a strong man, he's 40 years old. Somehow a 40 is a good number for Muhammad about being strong because that's when he's going to be a prophet too. Because 40 is the age of prophet. As, as we don't have any prophets in the Bible who were not even 40 younger prophet uh, by the way isa son of mary the prophet isa did not live to be 40 he, he, he left earth 33 the, according to muhammad he's not 40 he's not a prophet yet maybe when he comes back he grew up a little bit more and he gets the age of 40 and he'll be a, a, a prophet this is the propaganda story of uh, uh muhammad up to the point of uh, when he was going to be seduced by pharaoh's uh, by the Potiphar's wife or According to Muhammad Al Aziz's wife. Now let's go to chapter 38 in Genesis account. Genesis chapter 38. That's Judah and Tamar. Yeah, do we need I'm not gonna read it? I just want you to, to mention it. what do we have there? Joseph's story? Do we have anything about Joseph here? That's the no. Judah and Tamar. No, you know why Muhammad never mentioned that? Because he never really have access to the Bible. I guarantee you, if Muhammad read Genesis chapter 38, he would talk about Judah and he would talk about his wife and he talk about and and the rest. But he never mentions that. He skipped that one. You know what he skipped before? He skipped the death of Rachel because the story of Joseph starts in 37, not in 35, where we learn about Rachel when he passed, when she died, as she was given a birth to her son Benjamin. See, you don't have the true biblical account in the Quran. It is not complete word of Allah. It is a counterfeit, dumb counterfeit, missing so much stuff happening. Is this important chapter in the Bible? Of course it's important chapter. But why Muhammad did not mention? Because he didn't have access to it. He's just talking about Joseph. And because he never read what happened to Rachel and her death, Muhammad in the late verses of the Quran, he make another proof. We're going to get to it when we get to it because he did not know what happened here and there. In the true biblical account so we're going to skip 38 of course because have nothing to do with joseph but it's important portion of the life of jacob and i say the life of jacob for a reason because believe it believe it when we read ibn kassir book the beginning and the end let me hold here in my hand so people don't think i'm making it up in that book here 
Ibn Kathir was talking about the life of Jacob, the Bible, the, the Quranic teaching of the life of Jacob. And what do we see here in that book, the beginning and the end? Huh? Joseph. Why? Because Muhammad knew nothing about Jacob. All what you know is there's a guy's name Jacob, and somehow in the Quran, miraculously, his name is changed to Israel. And who is Israel? Allah knows. And we will know the story of Jacob through the life of his son Joseph. What a logical propaganda. It's like you know the story of my father by knowing my story, for heaven's sake. If you want to know the story of my father by the rest, by the life of my story, you will for sure know nothing about my father because my life actually started here in America. In Egypt, I don't have life. Nobody even know who you saw my doctor. But my father life, 62 years of ministering as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Egypt, it's a great story. I do not fit. Let me say it again. I do not fit in my father's shoes. I, me, all of me, you put me in my father's shoes, I don't fit in it. My daddy was a great minister. 62 years serving the Lord. Suffering from the Muslim Brotherhood, suffering from the government of Egypt, suffering from many other people, in the Muslim people in Egypt, for starting many, many churches. He has taught many, more than 40-some churches in Egypt. In Egypt, he cannot build one. But my daddy was given wisdom by God. He did 40-some churches in his life. I don't fit in his shoes. But you cannot tell me, you know the life of Reverend Dactyl, through you, Samad Dactyl, no. And that we read in Ibn Kassir about Joseph is just a comedy. It's just a comedy. Okay, chapter 39, let's see what happened to Joseph when he went from uh, being a slave uh, owned by the, some of these Midianites, uh, the, uh, uh, the Ishmaelites, who bought from the Ishmaelites and sold it to Al-Aziz of the Bible. Not Al-Aziz, trust me. Al-Aziz, a name is never mentioned anywhere in the Bible. It doesn't exist. Not in Egypt, not anywhere else in the Bible. I have no idea where Muhammad came up with that name, Al-Aziz. But go ahead, sister. Chapter 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, who was one of the Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of his, master, his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted his care, everything he owned. From the time he put him in a charge of his household and all of that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. That's a biblical now, Joseph, account. That, sorry. That, that's good for now. That is a biblical account. We read up to verse 5. Uh, and we're going to get to verse 6 in a minute, sister. But I want to go back to the Quran first. You see the detail of the account of Joseph? He was a slave, sold to that house, and uh, he's working hard. And everything Joseph touch is a blessing. It's like they say, uh, 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 was, uh, 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 this Musk guy who was going to buy tweet, everything he touched, I heard the statement, turned to gold. It's a very uh, smart, successful guy. So here's Joseph. Everything he touched is blessed, 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 blessed. So now Joseph, now not just a slave, he's like the head of the slaves. Not a son. Uh -uh. He's still a slave. He is the head of the household, and he was blessing. The blessing of God was on the Potiphar and everything that's because of Joseph. So now the Potiphar trusts Joseph so much, he just go to the house, eat, sleep, and leave, and everything under the control and the charge of Joseph. That is a biblical account. Where do we read that in the Quran? Let's, let's go to the Quran. Let me look. Maybe, maybe I found a verse about that in the Quran. Uh, let's read uh, uh, verse 22. No, no, not 22. The first, the next verse 22. What do we have there? 23. What do we have? 23. And she in in whose house he was. Oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I want to know about Joseph before I know about Al-Aziz's wife. 
anything about do we know anything about joseph what happened to joseph when he was living in the house of the al-aziz anything not yet and and you'll never find it later either hey muhammad forgot muhammad forgot to believe to teach his people in the perfect story of the quran that joseph was a very blessing he was a great blessing for his master his master's household what happened here verse 23 we go to he jumped Cut it short. You know, some of them say, why we need to learn that? Why we need to? Well, the base of the story, I need a little bit more information. I need to know what happened then, what happened after, what happened before. You see, that's not there. So let's get to uh, the beautiful lady who uh, want uh, to seduce Joseph in the Quran. Verse 23 and 24. 25. Go ahead. Read. And she in whose house he was sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and then said, Come you. He said, I seek refuge of Allah. Indeed, he is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrong doors will not succeed. Okay. And she so said, she want, Let's take one verse. Okay. She closed the doors. Something about the doors and Muhammad in the Quran. Not one door, but doors. Abuab. What is that with the doors of Muhammad? Egypt have one door. No, bunch of doors. And her house have doors. She closed the doors. That's, that's a very important details here. I need to know. And she said, I prepare myself for you. Come have a good time with me. Oh, I seek refuge of Allah. He is my Lord, not my master. My Lord, Rabbi. So whatever translation reading, a little bit off here, but it's okay. He's my Lord. He had done good to me. Why he bought master? Because he's saying, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it, it makes sense in the English language. You don't say Joseph was a Joseph was a believer. Remember now, he will not say his master is his lord, no, his lord, because that is how slaves talk. But in the Arabic language, he said Rabbi. In the English, he bought master. I make a big deal. Yes, I make a big deal. Why? Because according to the Quran, Joseph is a prophet. You should not say that his master is his lord. That's a, that's it's like he's my God. That's what he's saying. Was he worshiping Al Aziz? That's what he said, Rabbi. And Allah will, and, and, and he will not, uh, 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 the, the, the unjust will not be prosper. I want to be unprosper, so that's why I'm not going to do anything with him. But somehow, somehow, miraculously, even though in, in that verse, 23, he said no, somehow in 24, it changed his mind. Read 24 for us, sister. And she certainly determined to seduce him. And he would have inclined to her had not he not seen the proof of his Lord. And this, it was that we should avert from him evil and immorality. Indeed, he was of our chosen servants. If I open Ibn Kassir translation, interpretation of that verse, and I tell you what's in it, you may assume that Ibn Kassir was there in the house. I'm not kidding you. I really... Do not have time to go through all this. And by the way, here, Zikr um, al Israel, the mentioning of what happened, of this, uh, the amazing thing happened in the life of Israel. And he's not talking about Jacob. He's talking about Joseph, as I told you earlier. You don't know anything about Jacob from Ibn Kasir. You just uh, know the story of Joseph. Somehow Joseph became Jacob. How she closed the doors. Ibn Kasir on page 129 of his book uh, concerning the life of Jacob. He meant Joseph. But that's okay. Who cares? Close the door. And she prepared herself to him. As she wear her best clothes. The best hot, sexy clothes. And the most fancy clothes. And she was the wife of the prince. The wazir. Uh, yeah, what come before after the king? Prince, okay? Qala ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq told us. And the daughter of the... <laughs> the, the daughter of the sister of the king, Arrayan. 
Ibn al-Walid, the son of Walid, Sahib Masr, the companion of Masr. I mean, how in the world Ibn Kasir come up with these names? Arayan is a name, Egyptian name? Tell me Khufu, tell me Khafra, tell me Munkara, tell me Ahshaton, tell me Sanaton, tell me... Uh, I mean, we got lots of Egyptian names. What is it? Arayan uh, ibn al-Walid? Do, do the Egyptian names their names with Arab names? That must be. <laughs> hey, Ibn Kassir, who do you think you are, Hatun? Who do you say? I know nothing. Ibn Kassir knows everything. He's a Muslim scholar or Muslim dumber. That's okay. Fabricator. Fabricator. Why the Kulumana Yusuf alayhi salam shab badiyah jamal? All this and Joseph, he was a beautiful looking guy. Where do you know that Joseph was a beautiful, nice looking stud? It's in the Bible, but not in the Quran. But somehow they figured it out as he was there, okay? Well, he was so glorified one, okay? But he is a prophet from the descendants of the prophet. That's why his Lord, Allah, forbade him from committing indecency to have sex with her. And Allah delivered him from the deception of the women. He is a master of all, you know. He is one of the top seven pure. Who? Joseph. Prophet Joseph. Peace of Allah be on him. Okay. Uh, and she desired him and he desired. Wait, 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 wait. She desired him and he desired her. I thought he was one of the seven pure prophets. How he desired her to be involved with her. Okay, let me give you a little bit of the garbage of Muhammad. Uh, of, I'm sorry, Ibn Kasir, not Muhammad. Maybe actually it was al tabari I can't remember where I got this. Let, let me give it to you from my head. But it, it is in their scholars of Islam writing. She actually uh, took her clothes off. And he uh, started taking his clothes off. And then he saw the evidence of his Lord. And the Muslim scholars disagree about the evidence of his Lord. So he was about to make love to her uh, as... He looked at the ceiling and he sees the finger of his father, Jacob, writing some other verse from the Quran on the ceiling. Or, uh, you know, scholar disagree. I'm telling you, we need the details. It's like it's like they were there. Or the other person that actually heard uh, Jacob tell him, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Joseph, you're a prophet. You are one of the righteous. Don't do that. And that's why he changed his mind. So the, 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 this, the, the deception... Of, or, or the, 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 sedition, the sedition of that woman, the wife of Aziz, literally worked because he he's he fallen her with her. He's, he's about to make love to her. He took his clothes off. So somehow he changed his mind. He's about to stand up and leave. Okay. And Allah showed that miracle of writing of the voice, whatever he heard, whatever he saw on the sea. If it is that important, why can't Allah, eh, for heaven's sake, 111 verse, 112 verse. What difference does it make? Give me one more verse. No, it's not there. The details not there. The made-up story can be read by the scholars' interpretation, Ibn Kassir and others. I, I literally, I wish I had done a little bit search before the show, Hatun, so I can tell you exactly what he said. But anyway, it's all, it's all made up. It's all made up. Let's go to verse 25. And they both raced to the door, and she tore his shirt from back. And they find her husband at the door. She said, what is this recompense of one who intended evil for your wife, but that he, is in, he be imprisoned or a painful punishment? Oh, oh. so he changed his mind. He's going to put his clothes back again, whatever he was wearing. I can imagine. And he was running away from her and she told him from his shirt and his clothes, his, his kameez, kameez, his shirt, was tore. It cut. Adat kameez omindabr. Okay. It was cut from the back. She was pulling him to her and the cut, the, the shirt was cut from the back. 
And they're running through the door. He, he, he doesn't want to have sex with her. He saw Allah, Allah protected him. And as they run to the door, who's standing there? Mr. Al Aziz himself. And she's, Oh, look, honey, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you're here. What is the punishment for that one here who was trying to rape me or try to have sex with me? Except, and she told him, What are the two options? To be put in prison or painful torment. Wow. And the husband was at the door. The one Joseph have to defend himself. What we read in verse twenty six is the is the, the defense of of, of the, the prophet uh, Joseph be beyond upon him. Read for us twenty six, sister. Joseph said, "It was she who sought to seduce me, and I witness from her family testified. If his t shirt is torn from the front, then she has told the truth, and he is of the liars." And but if his t-shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied, and he is of the truthful. So when he saw his mm -hmm. t-shirt torn from the back, he said, indeed, it is of your plan. Indeed, your plan is great. Oh, I love it. By the way, uh, Ibn Kasir al-Tabri Nazar tells us that is, uh, one of the miracle things about uh, uh, baby talk, that little one who talked here, who made up this great idea, it was a little boy, normally cannot talk, like uh, Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, when he talked after birth. So a little, little something in the house spoke. It's a miracle. That's why they were like, wow, he's speaking. Like, uh, And then the, they have to listen to him. So what we have here, the, the, the investigation of the FBI, okay, in the Quran. Let us examine his shirt according to the little boy who spoke miraculously. If the shirt was caught in the front, she's telling the truth. And he's lying. Why? Imagine with me. Here is the lady. I am the lady. Okay. And Joseph is pushing himself on her. He is trying to have sex with her. And she's pushing him away. When you do push him away, naturally, the shirt will be caught in the front. Because you push him like that. Okay. Now, if the shirt is cut from the bags, that means she is holding him to her. She's she want to kiss him. She want to make love to him. So, and he's trying to go away. And guess what? The shirt will be cut. The shirt will be cut from the back. Well, already Allah told us that the shirt was cut from the back. But he will go. He uh, the uh, FBI investigated the case and found yeah, the shirt was cut from the back. So she is lying. And he's telling the truth. Okay, she is the one who does. She tries to seduce me. I, I, I'm not saying, Master. I'm, I, I'm, I didn't mean to do it. I, she's, she's the one. She's pushing me to it. For, no, okay. So, what was the reaction of the master here? Once again, the foolishness of Allah, Jibril, and Muhammad. I mean, Muhammad should correct it. If Allah gave it to him wrong, he should correct it. You have to understand, the Egyptian Futifar is not uh, some guy as uh, uh, even. Uh, uh, work at, at the gate, you know, uh, a, a slave to Pharaoh. No, he is a shorty. He's like a policeman. Authorities are authoritative place. A rich guy, an important guy. A guy can buy slaves. A guy can buy Joseph. Even if it is a low standard people of Egypt, the poorest of the Egyptian. When a man in Egypt, his wife want to cheat on him, and she's trying to have sex with one of his slaves, what do you think he's going to do? He can get a little bit upset. You know, go for a walk, smoke a cigarette, have a cup of coffee, and then you call off. No, that's not what they do. They actually kill their wives. They actually will be real angry, real mad. They maybe slap her right and left to say, what in the world do you think you're doing? But don't worry, the whole story is made up. That's not the biblical account. What Muhammad is telling the Quran he is a nonsensical story. He ruined my favorite story. I said it a million times. He ruined my favorite story. So he found out that he was telling the truth and she is a liar. So, uh, well, you know, he's just jealous. You ladies are so, uh, uh, you are so deceiver. I know you want to have sex with him. You know what, Joseph? You're so. I'm leaving. I'm going back to work. I don't have time for that. I have a very important meeting with uh, some other uh, people in the kingdom of Pharaoh. He just lets them be together in the house. He didn't get upset. He never raised his voice. He never get mad at Joseph because he found that he's an innocent. I mean, that stupid wife want to have an affair with her slave. So you know, I let it go and he move on with his life. I'm tired. Maybe maybe it was late at night and he want to go sleep. He want to sleep because tomorrow he have to work. He's not going to worry about it. This is what Muhammad 
told us the story. How Allah corrects that? How Allah fix that? How uh, that, that, that was it? That's the only the, the verse of the Quran. Let's read the last verse before we go book look together as the true biblical account. That is verse twenty nine. What is was advice to Joseph, and what was the advice for the uh, Al Aziz wife? Listen to the word of Allah. Joseph, ignore this, and my wife, ask forgiveness for your sin. Indeed, you were this, you were of the sinful. And woman said, oh, no, 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 leave this, we'll leave that. We'll get to it later. Just a minute. 29 is good enough. Joseph, turn away from that. Oh, Joseph, let her go, man. Don't, don't, don't mind her. Uh, she want to have sex with you. Don't mind. And, and you, 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 you lady, listen, listen up here. You better ask forgiveness of your sin. Forgiveness of sin. You mean having sex with her slave as a sin? And it, it's she, she neither repented of it, but you led them together in the house by themselves. You, you were a sinner, lady. Okay, don't do it again. Uh, I'm going to bed now. And it was amazing. We don't know who's talking here. Could it be her husband? Yeah. Could it be Allah? Yeah. But how can Allah talk to a sinful woman like this and say, as, as forgiveness? That's actually her husband. It makes more sense. It's Al-Aziz himself. Mr. Al-Aziz himself is speaking here. Forget about it, Joseph. Move on with your life, man. And lady, ask forgiveness for your sin. Let's go to the Bible. I'm going to tell you where Muhammad come up with the story and how Muhammad ruined the biblical story. Let's go to... Yeah. Uh, verse from verse six. Six. Yes, ma'am. And he left in Joseph's care everything he had with Joseph's in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And no, after a while, his master's no, wife. No, 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 no. Sister, Joseph. sister, sister. Joseph was what? Handsome. Well built and handsome. Well built. He is a nice looking guy. I know that Epic Asir talk about it in his interpretation, but where did he come up with this knowledge? Maybe he was ugly. Maybe he was a short. Maybe have a cricket eye or you know, cross eye. How do we know that? He told us about Joseph as if he met with Joseph and have coffee with him years ago. But in reality, the Bible said that. So if you want to, if you enjoy the interpretation of your scars about any story in the Bible, ask yourself the question, which I put that all the time in that book here. Exposing the truth about the Quran, the revelation of error, the story of the prophets. In that, in these two fine books, I always talk and ask the question, where did Ibn Kassir came up with this knowledge about anything? Oh, Ibn Kassir read the Bible and he's interpreting the Quran using the Bible, which, by the way, this information does not exist anywhere in the Quran. So he was a nice looking guy, well built, much strong muscles, nice looking, handsome uh, guy. Okay, go ahead, sister. Next now, verse. Joseph was well built and ha handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me but he refused with me in charge he told her my master does not concern himself with anything in this house everything he owns he has entrusted to my care no one is greater in this house than i am my master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife how then i could do such a wicked thing and sin against god wait a minute do we read that anyone in the quran no I know that the Quran said, Rabbi, my Lord, but somehow they translate into English, my master, which is actually what we read here, Sayyidi, my master. Not Rabbi, my Lord, Sayyidi. He's a slave owned by a master. Not, not, not owned by Allah or God, Rabbi. That's okay. And he explained to her the reason he will not have sex with her, not because he is in charge of the house, he said, because how can I do that? And I sin against God. In the Quran, oh, 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 oh. she desired him and he desired her. Hamad, she's like, she moved towards him and he moved towards her. That's not the Bible teaching. That's a corruption of Allah, Jibreel, and Muhammad in the Quran. And I know Muslims love to defend every prophet in the Bible and love to make fun of every sinful act of every prophet in the Bible by saying that's not the Bible. That's not the real Bible. There is no way. There is no way Lot have sex with his two daughters. Uh-uh. The Bible is corrupted. There is no way. 
that Noah got drunk. Uh -uh. There's no way that David commit adultery in the, as, as Muhammad. They never commit adultery in the Quran or, or in the, the Sunnah of Muhammad in the Hadith. And the, the, every time we read in the Bible, there's a sin of somebody. They jump on the Bible. The Bible is corrupted. That's not the real Bible because the Prophet of Allah will not do that. Wait a minute. But Joseph never thought to have sex with Futifar's wife. And the reason he said, how can I do that? And a sin against God. But in the Quran, Muhammad and Allah and Jibreel made Joseph a lover boy. Literally, read the interpretation of your scholars. He took his clothes off. He was about to make love to her. But Allah saved him. Was the right of the finger of his father or the voice of Jacob talking from the ceilings. They're telling you. He was laying on the chair back. And she came above him, took her clothes off, and he was looking at her, was about doing some kissing, and he saw on the, the ceiling. As if Ebony Casero, if somebody was there, and the, they saw the whole thing. It's like a movie. Hollywood was there with the cameras. Here, the answer is very clear. He did not desire her. He never wished to be close to her. And he said, why he did not do it? Because it's a sin against God. Tell this to Muhammad. The womanizer tells this to the Muslim believers who are allowed by Allah, the blessing of Allah, to be womanizer, to sleep with every woman they can have their hand on. Okay, go ahead, sister. Keep, keep reading. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her. It was not just one time. It's not like, uh, you know, one occasion or this, this is a continuation, sister. It's not just one time, one week. She just kept... Forcing him, forcing him, bothering him, bothering him. Is that what we read in the Quran? No. Just one time. We read in the Quran. Just one time happened. She desired him and he desired her and that was the end of it. Okay. No. In the Bible, the temptation for Joseph to be involved sexually, immorally with his master's wife was a continuation one time after one time after one time. But he had no choice. He's a slave. He had to work in the house. Even though he's in charge, he could say, uh, you know, I, I can't help but she really wants me so I might as well go ahead have a good time with him. No. He know it's a sin and he will not do it. Go ahead, sister. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even to be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of his household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak, his cloak and said, come to bed, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak and her hand and ran out of the house. Notice what happened here. He's going to, his house, to the house to do his work. She didn't close doors. There was no doors in the house. I mean, there must be one door, but no doors. And she, but she holding his clothes. He was alone. Nobody was in the house. Neither the uh, little boy who spoke in an infant, <laughs> nor her husband at the door. Nobody was in the house. As a matter of fact, as we continue to read, we know when did people came in the house. Okay. So, sleep with me, and he refused. She held in his clothes. He left the clock in the outside garment, and he ran. He knows that she was in a very bad situation. She's so much excited sexually. She wanted to be with him, and he ran out of the house. Okay? What happened next? When she saw that he had, he had left his cloak in her hand, and he ran out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them. This Hebrew has been brought to us, make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Oh, she bless my sister. See the story here? The logical story? She wanted him so badly, he refused, and she got mad. She got mad and angry. So she screamed, Ya Lahweee, Harabi. That's what the Egyptian would do. And the people started running in the house. There was nobody in the house. How did the people come in the house when she screamed? And she said, this Hebrew here was trying to molest me. That's the word you dad mean here. He's trying to play with me with his hand. And we take his clothes off to rape me. When I scream, as you heard me, he ran out. And here's his cloth. Here's his outside rope in my hand. See? Logic. Common sense. Does he meet the husband at the door? No. 
If the husband said, oh, well, he, he, it's just it's your deception. You want to have sex with him so badly. I know. And I, I need to go to bed. I, I have things important to do than that. Do we read that anywhere in the Bible? No. As a matter of fact, listen what happened here. Here's the husband coming in. It's just Muhammad put it in the wrong time, in the wrong verse, with the wrong conclusion, with the wrong reaction. Everything about the Quran is wrong. Okay? Go ahead. The next verse, sister. Verse 16. She kept his clock beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Tibri slave you brought, brought us come to me to make, so, make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his clock be, beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story of his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burdened with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison. He, he, he got angry? He got angry. Is this, is this a normal thing for a man to get angry because a slave want to play with his wife? I mean, really? No! The Quran is right and the Bible is wrong. He was busy. He want to go to sleep, but then he let it go. Let him stay a little bit longer with her. Maybe in the future she will really make love to him. Who knows? What kind of Egyptian are these? Garbage? It's okay for everybody to sleep with his wife? With his not, with his not. Listen to this. He was, his wrath was kindled. I mean, the guy's face was red. He was so angry. Normal reaction. Real normal reaction. So what happened? She told, so she told him, well, he be put in prison or, or be punished severely. Really? Is, is, was this her suggestion? Let's see who did what in the following verse. That is verse 20. 20. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Let's stop here. Let's stop here. We're going to get to it when we get to the prison in the Quran. He was thrown in the prison not because she said so, because he said so. As a matter of fact, I'm not surprised because obviously this is the kindness of God to Joseph and the love of God to Joseph, which as we mentioned earlier, this is the story which brings us the salvation for you and I. See, Joseph cannot die. If it is a normal reaction, that master who is so angry, he will kill Joseph, just a slave. I mean, for, for the Egyptians, for the pharaohs, for the photophars. Oh, so what? They got plenty of slaves. He can kill him and get 10 more better than him. But from God's grace on Joseph, that he did not kill him. He just threw him in the prison. That's, that is the, 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 the least thing a man in, in Potiphar's position in Egypt would do if he heard the story of his wife. Did Joseph somewhere here, Sister Hatun, between verses 20 and uh, 21, did Joseph, uh, oh no, I did not do it. She was the one she seduced me. And we, and ask the little boy here, he's going to tell you that my shirt, look, look, my shirt is cut in the back. Do we read that anywhere in the Bible? The fairy tales uh, was in the details of Muhammad in the Quran, it's, it's, it's a comedy. Well, uh, when, it, when we don't see any logical there from any from any of the story. Remember, Jacob? Ah, <laughs> be patient. Guys, you work so hard. You wake him up. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my boy shirt. Hey, uh, to the wife, fix him some dinner. Let's have coffee and uh, be patient. No, that's not a normal action. Here's the Potiphar, the Aziz. Oh, it's just your jealous woman. You know what? You women are, you're, you're just extreme deceiver. You want to have sex with I know you want to have sex with him, but I don't have time. I need to go to sleep. No. Everything about the Quran is illogical. It doesn't make any sense. It does not fit with the biblical account. Not because the Bible story is different. Because who said? Maybe the Quran is true. The Bible is wrong. No. The Quran does not fit any logical thinking. If you have any common sense of what would be the reaction to all of these actions taking place. Now, let's go back to the Quran. Because guess what? <laughs> She's still with him in the house. But we have a problem, Sister Hatun. Rumors, you know, women like to talk all the way from the days of Joseph, as a matter of fact, from the days of Eve, uh, until the day. Women love to talk. But here in the story, it's a little bit more uh, uh, unbelievable. Uh, 
because um, because all the women of the city uh, uh, use the technology of today. I'm going to show you this how as you read for us uh, verse uh, 30. Okay, uh, verse 30. G just read for me Quran chapter 12, verse 30. And I'm going to tell you how the Egyptian had technology in Joseph days. Go ahead. And woman in the city said, the wife of Al Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He has imprisoned her with love. Indeed, we saw her to be in clear error. So what happened is one of the Egyptian ladies lived near her house. Picked up the phone. It was an iPhone, just like that one. Hello, Nancy. Hey, <laughs> this is Rhoda. How are you? Well, I'm going to tell you a secret, but please don't tell anybody. Okay, just keep it between you and I. El Aziz's wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's in love with her boy, the slave. You know, the slave. Oh, yeah, she want to have sex with him. Hey, don't tell anybody now. Keep this between you and I. Okay, thanks, honey. Love you. Hey, we'll we get together for a coffee or something. Okay, bye-bye. And then Nancy picked up the phone. Text message to all her friends. Oh, I heard, and it's true. And Aziz's wife is in love with her slave boy, and she's trying to have sex with him. And she writes a text message and sent a group text, 10 people. And the rumor got so big, Sister Hatun, the whole entire cities learn about the love romantic relationship between Al Aziz's wife and her slave Joseph. I'm not kidding you that some of these ladies picked up the phone and called Al Aziz's wife herself and she said, Hey, I heard that. I'm not sure if it's true or not. I heard that so and so said to so and so that you are in love with the slave boys of yours. And I'm just telling you because I love you. You're my friend. I'm your true friend now. I, I'm your special friend. And I, I want to make sure that, you know, defend yourself because I, I don't believe you did that, but that's what I heard. How do I know that? The following verse. Go ahead. Next verse, 31. So when she heard of their scheming. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. See, Sister Hatun, I was not making up a story. I'm actually a better interpreter than anybody can see it. She heard of their scheming. How did, when the lady by the name judy called her and told her you know judy the lady she had two boys and little girl you know okay that lady called and told her see that's how ibn kasir does his work in his interpretation they give you names made up names the other information is not anywhere not in the bible not in the quran and they made up that's exactly what i'm sure heard, okay so what did she do to defend herself go ahead so when she heard their scheming she went from she went she sent for them and mm -hmm. prepared for them a banquet and gave each one of them a knife and said, come out before them. And when they saw him, they greatly admired him and cut their hands and said, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. This is none but a noble angel. Ooh. So she heard that the rumor spread in the whole city. All the ladies know about it. So she made a party. A party with a fruit. <laughs> I love it how Ibn Kasir gave us the name of the fruit. And that fruit required a knife to cut the fruit. Okay? It's not something you can peel like a banana or orange. No, no, no. It, you need a, 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 it's a special fruit. And you have to cut with an Each one of them sit on the table, big table, all the ladies. Gives them the knife, gives them the fruit. And by the way, this is what is written in the, called the uh, oracle uh, tradition of the Joseph story by the Jewish. Uh, it's not the biblical, it's not Genesis account. It is the stories told by mouse from one to one to one. And when you tell a story by the mouse, most likely somehow new information gained inside it, somehow miraculously. We believe this game is called phone, uh, phone tag, whatever you call it in the uh, in, in English, where you whisper a sentence to the person sick next to you. And then he whispered it to the person sit next to him, her, him, her, him. By the time you go in a circle and come back to you, it's a completely different sentence. So that is a problem with... I'm sorry? Chinese whisper. 
Okay, Chinese whisper. By the time it comes to the original, it's, I'm not kidding you. You may say uh, Johnny bought a car. It come in here. Johnny die in, in a car accident or something completely different. Maybe not even the car will not be there. Johnny die in an airplane crash. See what happened here? It's, so this is uh, the oral teaching of biblical stories by the Jewish people. Muhammad heard it and he copied it. And his, amazingly, his scholar will use that information in detail more than what's in the Quran. So not only Muslim scholars are, are interpreting the Quran by the Bible, they're interpreting the Quran by the real source of the story of the Quran, which is a counterfeit of the Bible to start with. So anyway, so now all the ladies sitting there and the guys are like, and he said, Joseph, honey, baby, come here. I want you to come here. And he has he coming in, and all these ladies looked at him. It's like, oh my God. That is a hot, cool stud. This is so cool. I want to have sex with him, me, myself. No kidding. I'm going to show it to you. In the verse of the Quran, they all want to have sex with him. Not just Al-Aziz's wife. They all are whoo, fascinated with his love, with his looks, with his muscles, with his beauty. He's a handsome. Look, look the Bible says he's handsome. Here we go. So they said, this is not just a human. This is an angel. So much. Could not believe their eyes. They grab the knife and cut and cut the right hand and the left hand. They're all bleeding now. Wow. That was because they got distracted by his beauty, apparently. Hatun, I'm telling you, he's a stud, nice looking guy. Woohoo! Thank you, Allah. And the funny thing is, this Egyptian who do not believe in Allah, they're actually talking about Allah in the same verse. <laughs> what is the amazing thing, Hatun, when I read the idol worshiper? When they swear in the interpretation of Al Tabari and Ibn Kasir and Qurtan, they swear by Allah. They don't swear by their false gods. They swear by Allah. Here's the Egyptian ladies. What does he say? That's where he will go. Hasha lillah. Allah forbid. I don't know how you read it in your translation. Allah forbid. This is not an angel, a human. This is a generous angel. Is the Egyptian women knows Allah, the God of Muhammad? Wait a minute. Our God in that days is Pharaoh. No kidding. Pharaoh is our God. They did not. Pharaoh forbids. No, they say Allah forbids. Hasha lillah. It says, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. This is a non but a noble angel. Hasha lillah in Arabic, in English, Allah forbids. In the other translation is a comedy. A lot, another line, but anyway, so now, now she's gonna say, Here it is. You know, they all got distracted that you said, and they cut their hand, they even know what they're doing. The guy is so hot looking, dude, he can't help it. So now, let's uh, let's go to the uh, next verse that is the the, the amazing uh, loosening immorality of the Egyptian. After all, her husband knows she want to have sex with him. He didn't throw him outside the house. He didn't get mad at her. He just lets him be. <laughs> have a good time. Well, you know, Joseph, to be honest with you, don't go, sir, man. But but I need to go, okay? He was busy. The Al-Aziz was busy. So what did she say in verse 32? She said, that is the one about whom you blame me. And I certainly sought to seduce him. But he firmly refused. And if he will not do what I order him, he will surely be in prison and will be of those de debased. Wow. This is the hot looking stud which you are uh, talking about. The, all the rumors and phone calls and text messages. Uh, that's him. You see? And here's the deal. If you will not have sex with me, <laughs> listen, <laughs> she's not she's not embarrassed even of it. Openly, a married woman to a prince, to a prince. If you will not have sex with me, surely he will be put in, in prison. He will be of the in the uh, the lowest. Now, look what Joseph said, and notice the plural language. Not singular. He's not talking about her. He's talking about them. All these ladies who really do not find a man but Joseph to sleep with. Go ahead. Verse uh, 33. He said, my Lord, prison is more to my liking than that to which they invite me. 
and if you do not avert from their from their plan, I might incline towards them and be one of the ignorant. Go read any interpretation you like. It's not Usama Dagdot, it is Muslim scholars interpretation that all these ladies around the table, all of them, they were so I can't mean, I see, the, the word start with alliteration. They wanted Joseph immediately. They want to have sex with him on the spot. They could not wait a second a minute. They want to have sex with him. And Joseph said, Oh, Allah, help me, Lord. Help me. Prison is more beautiful for me than sleep with these women. If you will not remove their their uh, kite, their deception, or their their sneaky walk talking with me, I'm gonna be a fool. I'm gonna sleep with all of them. What part of Genesis account we read that propaganda made up story about the women? No, it is actually in the oral talk of the Jewish people, and who knows? In in, in my imagination, I think they literally told Muhammad this made up stuff, waiting for him. To put it in his Quran and he followed it and he put it in his Quran as if it is true. It is not the Genesis account, it is not the biblical account, it does not fit with logic, it is foolishness. So, what did Allah do? Allah helped him. Praise Allah, because he is one of the seven righteous prophet, pure prophet. He will not have sex with these women. All these women, I mean, Allah delivered him from an Aziz wife. Now, all these women, can you imagine now? You're going to be what? He's going to be Muhammad number one? Muhammad can sleep with all these women, but Joseph is a pure one. And by the way, Muslim will tell you Muhammad is a pure one too. <laughs> and a believing woman, Quran chapter 33, verse 50, if she offer herself to the Prophet of Allah, if the Prophet of Allah desire to, yes, thank you. That is to have sex with her, not once, but continuation of have sex with her. Yastanka is a word in the Arabic language built on the verb yastafal, which means you do and you do and you do. You continue to be involved with them sexually. It's a privilege for Muhammad. Somehow Allah forgot to give the privilege to Joseph. So what did Allah do in verse 34? So his Lord respond to him and averted from their him from their plan. Indeed, he is the hearing and the knowing. So Allah somehow <laughs> uh, 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 changed not Joseph, but the women. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe actually it could be Joseph here. It could be. I don't know. If I look at the, uh, let me slap quickly here. Let's see what Al Tabri said. Uh, okay. Allah taught Joseph that the decision would be more loved for him than he have sex with this woman. And he said he did that by by telling Allah, complaining to Allah about what he received from them, the women. All of them, by the way, not just as his wife, all the women, the plural, okay? Okay, Allah, he said in Allah, if you will not uh, remove this from me, I will insult you. In la tazirni ahinak, mean I will insult you. As a prophet of Allah, he should not do that. As in, as in, as in as a work. As a work. I don't know how this word is. It, the problem is in the reading of uh, al tabri interpretation, there is no tashkil. So you can be reading some of the Torah. Anyway, Allah fada'a fasarafa anhu ma aradat minhu amrat al-aziz. So Allah removed from him what al-aziz wife desired from him. And that's obviously one interpretation. As you know, if I can read for another half hour, I'll give you 10 different opinions. And you just choose which one you like. Okay? Um, I think that this is a good, a good place to stop because it, when, if we get to the prison, we're going to be a little bit excited and I get a little bit longer time. So far, we have seen uh, in the Quran a comedy story uh, with so much fabrication. And by the way, the fabrication about the woman of Al-Aziz here will repeat itself later in the Quran. So it's not just one time. It's coming in because Joseph still needs to defend himself a little bit later. 
and uh, and that case was going to go all the way to Pharaoh himself, not just Aziz, but Pharaoh himself. God help us. Uh, they uh, go into the prison and coming out of the prison, and the rest of the story, we will continue with that, Lord's willing, in a couple of weeks as we continue with the uh, uh, comparison between uh, what uh, the Bible said and what uh, uh, Muhammad said concerning the story of Joseph. Thank you, brother. So we've been looking at Surah 12, and today we looked at, we picked up from verse 13 to 34. Verse one of Surah 12 states, this is clear book. And verse, verse 111, last verse of the Surah 12 states, it is well detailed. But what <laughs> Usama is doing is simply looking at the verses and then asking very basic question to this very well detailed chapter. And he couldn't do without going to Bible. Things didn't make sense in the word of Allah. Yet, um, even though we start kind of taking Quran as itself, we were disturbed by the details or the, by the way, stories has been represented. Um, such a shame and disgraceful to Allah for destroying his previous world, I think. <laughs> Sister, I mean, I'm telling you, it break my heart. To see Muslims believe in the Quran to be the perfect word of Allah, never been corrupted, and in in, in reality, and you know better about that than anybody else, we got plenty of Quran with different writings and different wording. But even when you open any of them, just choose one. Half here, we talk about half here. Read the story of Joseph, my dear Muslim friends. I'm asking you, use your common sense use god give you a brain and you want to use that brain use it as you read the best of the quran chapter 12 and you found there's so many nonsensical information there's comedy there's no way that you can be a person who can read arabic or read english if you can read that means you got enough logic to figure out what you're reading does not make any sense if you cannot read i'm sorry find somebody to read the quran for you arabic or english and you will discover for yourself this cannot be the perfect word of God, because none of it make any sense. And the rest is yet to come. We have a lot to cover. We have a lot to cover. While we are looking at the surah, which is supposed to make sense, doesn't make sense at all. So that's like another problem within itself. Um, Brother Osama, thank you very much for um, joining us tonight. Um, sure. What have you got in next couple of, next two weeks and how can people pray for you before I send you away? I know sure. um, we uh, do have brothers and sisters and friends in the chat who amen. loves to pray. So anything amen. we Praise can be praying for. Praise God. I'll be uh, speaking in different places here in uh, uh, in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. So pray for safety, uh, especially some Muslims here do not like me at all. And uh, I do not know why, because I saw Islam is a loving and peaceful religion. But somehow when I come to Minnesota, especially they like to stand outside the church and uh, wave their hand and uh, carry nice signs and beautiful say they call this protest it's a peaceful so far it's been peaceful so but so far nobody attacked me physically and i thank god for that but at the same time pray for the people who are going to hear the message uh, we're looking for a big one in uh, Wilmar, where there's lots of muslims last time uh, i did spoke that we have not i'm not sure it's going to be this time or not Maybe I have to come back again in October. But last time I spoke here, there were uh, almost 400 people outside the school protesting me. And uh, I only have like 250 people inside the school building. <laughs> Imagine, Hatun, 250 listening to me and 400 outside. And what was so amazing about the 400 were outside, actually, some of them were, uh, uh, some of them were uh, uh, Christians. And they hold hands with the Muslims outside uh, the school to pray for me and uh, uh, and then some of the muslim somali came in which i love and then some of the good white uh, american christians go inside the school and talk to them and take them out they would actually pull them outside of my meeting i have no problem for muslim to protest outside i have no problem so wicked by the way most of these christians are gay and lesbian churches in minnesota they love to protest my meeting with the muslims but what I have a problem is you come inside the meeting and you take these Muslim people out of my meeting because the, the Lord brought them in to hear what I'm teaching. You have no right to do that. 
So not only the liberals of America want to end our freedom of speech, which is First Amendment, do you want to end the freedom of hearing by shutting down the ears of the Muslim by taking them out of my meeting? So pray that uh, we can go back to Walmart. Uh, the school, by the way, raised the price from used to be $120 for uh, cleaning up the room uh, to uh, 600 because you get a policeman. Now they want, I don't know how many thousands of dollars. They want to bring the army of the United States of America into the school to protect the Muslims from me. I said, I don't need any, uh, any uh, protection. I don't need any policeman. No, 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 you, we have to. Because when you come, you bring chaos to our community. Anyway, well, so we pray. So we pray. We, we pray um, for your work as well as we pray for our brothers and sisters who do share different methodology, and also our brothers and sisters who needs to turn to their first love. We do pray for them as well. But Amen. also we pray for Lord Jesus Christ to continue to save the souls of Muslims. Thank you very much, everyone who has joined me. And Brother Osama, thank you so much for you, um, thank you. joining us tonight. Uh, so we did kind of quite a lot of verses and you helped us to think again and remember how well the tale Quran actually forgets the essentials. So thank you very much for that. Thank we will you. be praying for you. Um, once again, thank you very much, everyone who joined us in the chat. Um, as well as thank you to our guests who joined us as well. By God's grace, we will see you tomorrow evening for another live stream, or we will see you at the bosom of the Father. God bless you all. Amen.